Hi. So, in the previous video, we dealt with uh, we dealt with uh, we dealt with exact uh, differential equations, and I told you that we are going to use these exact differential equations to find the solution for first order differential equation with variable coefficient and variable term. Yeah, horrible. Uh, a, a horrible long name, I know. Okay, and look, now I'm going to introduce one last missing ingredient to and one last missing ingredient uh, that we need to find this solution. It's called integrating factor. Okay, here we've got definition. Uh, so let's read it and think what it means. Look, it's an expression that makes inexact differential equation exact if you multiply this equation by it. Okay, look, so we know how to solve exact differential equation. But look, we have no guarantee that the equation we are dealing with is exact, right? But even if it isn't, maybe there exists some expression that if we multiply both hand sides of this equation by this particular expression, it will make our uh, equation exact. And this is the integrating factor. And look, of course, for each equation, this factor is going to be different. But we really need to find it for just one equation, the general form of the first order differential equation with variable coefficient and variable term. Okay, but let me illustrate this to you with a very simple example. Okay, so uh, let's just say that our equation is 2t dy plus y dt equals to 0. Okay, this is an equation, and, but we don't know whether this is an exact equation or not. So what should we do? Test of exactness, of course. So uh, our m is 2t, our n is y. So d, uh, uh, dm dt is equal to 2, and d n d y is 1. Oh, that's good. Well, this equation is definitely not exact. So, but what I can do is, for example, I can multiply both sides of this equation by y. What will happen then? Look, this will turn into 2t y, and this will turn to y squared, right? So m will be 2t y, and n will be y squared. And now, dm dt uh, is going to be equal to 2y, and dn dy is going to be equal to 2y. As you see, this equation is exact because Jung's theorem holds. And look, did we violate this equation? Well, no. We multiply both sides of this equation by exactly the same expression. So both these two are equal to zero. So look, this method is showing us that, so this example is showing us that if we are able to find such, a, 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 such an element, we can make equation into, uh, a, we can make inexact differential equation into, uh, into exact one, right? Now, so, but look, we are interested in a very specific equation. Well, because we want to find the solution to first order differential equation with variable coefficient, we remember that u is a function of t and variable term, with w is also a function of t. Okay, so first thing 
think we notice when we look at it? Well, this doesn't look like anything that we had. But look, I already showed you that this is just an illusion. I can work with this expression to make it look like this one. And it's quite easy. Look, if I'm going to multiply both sides by dt, I'm going to obtain dy plus uh, uy dt equals to w dt. Now look, I can move this to the other hand side of the equation, and what am I getting? dy plus uh, uy minus w dt equals to zero. Okay, so because we just took the equation that we know and we should transform it into the form that, that, that we know, we can perform the test. Because look, now our m, oh it's very simple, it's 1, and our n is equal to u y minus w. And look, even by looking at those two, I hope we can immediately see that uh, this is not uh, uh, that this is not uh, uh, this is not an exact equation, right? Because look, if I'm gonna differentiate this with respect to t, I'm gonna get zero. And if I'm gonna get differentiate this with respect to n, um, with respect to y. I'm going to get you. Well, this will not work. So, now, what I'm going to do is to do a very simple trick. Look, I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by i, where i is some function of time, and we're going to call it integrating Factor. So this is the factor that we had uh, described over here. Okay, so look, what is now changing? Look, here we have expression that looks like this. y dy i dy plus i u y minus w d t zero. Okay. And look, now let's perform uh, the exact next test once again. So we get that this that dm, which is now this is our m, right? dt uh, uh, is equal to i prime, right? We, because we just said that i is a function of time, so because the only thing our m is equal to i. The only thing we are getting is the first derivative of time, which we can denote as i prime, right? Now, uh, our n is this whole thing. So now, if I'm differentiating this with respect to y, I'm getting, look, this expression doesn't have y, it's gone in differentiation. We've got just i times u. Or, well, okay, let, let, let it stay like this. Okay, and now look, if this equation is to be exact, this condition must hold that those two are equal to one another. In other words, we must have that i prime equals i times u. Okay. Maybe you've seen it somewhere? I hope. Maybe, maybe not at this moment, but probably once I'm going to start working with this expression, we will get, uh, we will get where have we seen this expression. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is to rewrite it a little bit different. What do we have here? i prime over i equals to you. Okay, maybe now. Huh. How about if I integrate both sides with respect to t? Of 
course we remember that u is some function of time so this is it we cannot do any more with this but definitely we can do something with the other hand side because we are getting that ln that this is simply ln uh, 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 ln i we are assuming that i is positive uh, again we could do it for negative values but uh, there would be uh, just no point right and of course we add c okay and it's equal to this answer okay so how about now I'm going to take the C, put it on the other hand side of the equation. And now I'm going to take anti log. Okay, haven't we done this already? Yes, we did. We did it already twice. When we were deriving first and second order differential, and first different order differential equation with constant coefficient and constant term and homogeneous case uh, for the uh, case with variable term. And look, now again we're getting that this is e to the power l and i equal to uh, e. Okay, I'm already going to write it like this, e to the power negative c times e to the power u d integral u dt and we remember that this is just i as a function of time this is an arbitrary constant and this is so look what has happened through this process we actually calculated what is our integrating factor our integrating factor is this which looks almost like a solution uh, to, a, a, to a variable, a, a homogeneous case. The only thing is that is missing is minus. But you will see that actually the fact that we have this over here and this in the com complementary function for first order differential equation, homogeneous equation with variable term, is not a coincidence. Okay, so look, now that we know this, we can go one step, uh, one step further and we can apply it, uh, we can apply the integrating factor that we were missing into, uh, into our differential equation, right? We can use, we can actually start from this line, right? And we can just replace i because now we found it. Okay. So we will have, oh, and there is one more thing. Look, integrating factor, in case of integrating factor, this a is unnecessary. Why? Because look, if I'm gonna put a over here, over here, and I divide both sides by a, it's gone. So actually, uh, the only thing we need as an integrating factor is this. But of course, it doesn't matter what constant, would stand in front of it, assuming that this constant is different than zero. Uh, but of course, this is prohibited in this case. Uh, we would have uh, a, we would have a, a, we would have exactly the same result. Okay, but now let's go back to, to our equation that, that we had. So let's substitute the in a integrating factor over here. So we've got that this is e to the power integral u dt dy plus e to the power integral of u dt uy minus w dt z. Look, the only thing that I want you to remember at this point is that u and w are both functions of time but neither of them contains y. This is important. Okay, so look, our m is this. Our n is this. Let's now perform test of exactness. Okay, so we've got the dm 
d t is equal to look if I differentiate expression with e to the power that is a function what I'm getting up front derivative right but look here u is integrated so derivative of integrated u is just u and now let's move to uh, let's just move to uh, this expression so now I need to differentiate uh, n but this time with respect to y okay and look w does not contain y it's gone in differentiation u is a constant none of this contains uh, y so derivative is just the coefficient of y and coefficient of y is e to the power integral u dt times u which is the same so we see that we are actually dealing here with an, uh, 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 an exact differential equation what does it mean for us? Well, it means that we can solve it using the four-step procedure that we've introduced in a previous video. So let's uh, uh, so let's do it. Okay. So first step number one. What do we do? We find some function f of y t by integrating m respect to y, and we have the component associated with t denoted as psi t okay so what do I need to uh, integrate over here okay so look I need to integrate uh, 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 well I need to integrate this uh, we've got integral of e to the power u d t d y plus c t okay. look it might seem very complicated at the first sight but again we should remember u is a function of t alone it does not contain any y so look what we've got over here from the perspective of y is a constant so what we get is y times e to the power u d t plus of course c but we remember that c goes into c uh, ok then uh, and then uh, we go to step number 2 now what do we need to do is to calculate the derivative of f with respect to t okay and look, now uh, we will have <coughs> I'm sorry. now we will have uh, u is a function of t so when we when we differentiate it we do exactly the same thing as we did over here right u goes up front so we've got u y e to the power u d t uh, right I hope this is clear and of course plus c prime of t then we are noticing that we have here another expression for d f d t so this is our n. Okay, look, our n is this, right? So let me rewrite it into two terms. The first term is going to be uy e to the power u d t, and the second one is minus w times e to the power u d t. Right? Huh. Look, now we see that those two expressions are exactly the same. 
So we get that C prime is equal to W E integral U D uh, U D T. Okay. Step number three. And what do we do in step number three? In step number three, we are integrating C, but with respect to time. This, uh, with respect to time. Right? So we calculate integral of C, uh, uh, C prime, of course, D. T. So we integrate W in U D T D T. And unfortunately, having only the amount of information we possess at the moment, we cannot do anything, uh, anything else with. It. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Of course, I'm sorry. Over here. I miss the minus, right? The minus. And over here, we need to have the minus as well. Okay? So, uh, now let's go to step number four. And in step number four, remember we needed to, uh, we needed to uh, combine the two results. So, our first result uh, was that f y of t was equal to uh, in, uh, was equal to uh, y e I'm sorry, y e to the power u d t and now we would have to add to it uh, we would have to add to it uh, Psi, right? Because here we have Psi, integral of Psi prime, and it's equal to negative, uh, negative uh, integral W E U D T D T. Okay, so it looks, uh, it looks like we are getting somewhere with this. But there is, there is one more thing we need to notice. Look, before we said that f y t was equal to some c, right? But c is an arbitrary constant. So why not say that this is going to be a, and if this is a, Right? It means that this uh, is equal to A. Okay, now, uh, now we need to deal with this a little bit, right? Because at this moment, we still do not have the function of, uh, in the express, uh, we do not have the answer in terms of Y. But look, it should not be that complicated. First, I can move this to the other hand side of the equation. Uh, dt. And I have here a plus e u d t d t. Okay, and now the last thing I want to get rid of is this, right? So, what do I need to do over here? Well, all I have to do is to multiply both sides of the equation by e to the power negative u dt. And this is something we should remember from our previous considerations. And now, we finally obtain the solution y of t is equal to e to the power negative u integral u dt times a plus 
integral w e integral u d t d t and what you see over here is that solution to a differential first order differential equation with with variable coefficient and variable term look this expression this expression might seem a little bit weird to you but look when we will be solving some equation using this formula it will turn out really easy because look if i multiply a by this what am i going to get i'm going to get complementary function complementary function as derived in the previous video was given by a to the power e negative integral u d t right and look in a lot of the cases we will have a situation in which those two will cancel each other out because it will lead to very similar let's just say expressions which will make our life easier but of course remember that this expression is going to show us a deviation from equilibrium everything else we're going to get from this is going to be particular integral which is going to show us equilibrium solution but maybe uh, this is enough. Let's just do one more. Uh, let's just do an example on how to use this equation. You will be practicing a lot more with Valeria Green uh, workshops. Okay. So the equation we need to deal with is dy dt uh, plus two ty equals to t. And look, this is first order differential equation with variable coefficient and variable term. So u is equal to t, uh, 2t, I'm sorry, and w is equal to t. So look, if we want to solve it, the only thing we need to do is of course to apply the formula. There is no way, no other way around it. Okay. So we've got that this is e to the power negative integral u d t times a plus integral w e to the power u d t d t and it's gone. So now let's start substituting. Look, we've got that this is e to the power negative integral 2t dt right and just substitute it then we open parenthesis and we've got a plus integral of t times e to the power uh, integral u d uh, u, uh, u dt i'm sorry u dt is 2t dt and d Okay, let's go further. Now, look, this one is easy to calculate. This is d squared over 2 times 2, so this is d squared. We've got e to the power negative d squared times a plus integral. Of course, look, again, if I would have here plus c, plus c is instantly merged into a a. Uh, and into this expression as well, but it also contains C, so it's merged into this C. Now, here we have T to the power E, uh, T squared D, uh, T squared D, T. Okay, now, if I would differentiate this function, I would get 2T. 
So if I want to integrate it, I want to have 2t over here. So I'm taking 1 over 2 out and I'm putting 2 over here. And now I can just calculate it. And I've got that this is e to the power negative t squared times a times plus 1 over 2 uh, e to the power t squared plus c. But again, plus c is merged into a. Okay. The only thing left is to multiply everything out. And look, this gives us a to the power e uh, 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 times e to the power negative t squared plus, and look, those two cancel each other out and we've just got 1 over 2. So, this expression that we see over here of course is our complementary function. Well, this 1 over 2 is a particular integral which represents equilibrium solution. So here we see we have stationary equilibrium and over here we see the function that is showing us what happens when, uh, 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 when variable y deviates from equilibrium and because it has a minus up here we can clearly see that this expression gets lower with time so we will have convergence to equilibrium or dynamic stability of an equilibrium. Okay, and uh, this is it about derivation of the, uh, of the solution for first order differential equation with variable coefficient and variable term. Now, in the next video, we're gonna, I'm going to calculate with you a very specific case of a, uh, of a first order differential equation with constant coefficient and variable term which has tremendous economic applications but not only to economics and we're going to elaborate on it in the next video okay so thank you for your attention and see you in the next video